Well, it is time for another edition of Your Hometown. This month's location is in Macomb, and that is where we find Ken South and Walt Grayson, who join us now live. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey, thank you, Alan. Yeah, we're coming another edition of your hometown driven by hallmark hyundai and uh, of course got ken south is always with me because yeah. he's my navigator <laughs> and sometimes driver and always listens and to sometimes me i just ride like That's i did right. today <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, every every month we go to a different location in Mississippi to showcase what is unique and special about that place. Of course, today we are here in Macomb. We've kind of changed locations a couple of different times, but right now we are at the new temporary location of the Macomb City Railroad Depot Museum. And, you know, Ken, every town has its history, and Macomb sure has their share of history, and the heart of Macomb's history is right here in this museum. I guess you would see a, say we're a museum in the making. The Macomb Railroad Depot Museum is a landmark in the city. Back in 2021, the depot was destroyed by an arson fire, but that didn't stop directors Ganeeth and Sam Daniel. An arsonist on May the 30th, 2021, set fire to our beautiful old 1901 depot. And the depot housed not only the Amtrak waiting area, but our Macomb Railroad History Museum. It was the heart of Macomb. And we had to stand there that Sunday and watch it burning. And it, everyone was just so devastated. So we have had quite a task getting things put back together. The museum has since opened a temporary location on 3rd Street until the depot's restored. Some items were able to be restored and some were not. We've had a number of artifacts given to us since the fire. Um, wonderful things, very generous people, people from uh, Louisiana, Tennessee, all over Mississippi and a lot of local people. As they clean out grandmother's house or they clean out their own houses, they're finding things that we just cherish to have here at the museum. And one lady whose father died 38 years ago, he was a conductor on the railroad, uh, he, she kept his uniform in a closet. She dry cleaned it right after he passed away 38 years ago. And she wondered a number of times what she should do with that particular uniform. Should she throw it away? Who do you give it to? They don't wear them like this anymore. So now when she comes to Macomb, she stops by to see her dad. Back in the 1800s, Henry Simpson Macomb was a union colonel. And after the Civil War, he became interested in railroads and purchased the devastated Mississippi Railroad. Macomb was looking for land to further expand its growing railroad company and to create a new repair facility to service railroad cars and locomotives. The connection with the railroads goes back to the 1870s. Macomb was officially incorporated in 1872, and actually in April of 1872. Prior to that, this was just an area that had forest and clearings and a few little houses throughout this area. But when the railroad came through, when Colonel McComb decided to build the shops here in this, this area that was between Summit and Magnolia, he built the shops, he built the roundhouses, and this became a central location for that main line of America. With the building of those things came in the workmen, and they had housing for the railroad people, and everything was centered around the railroad. Businesses came in, hotels, restaurants, churches, everything developed after the founding of Macomb in 1872. In addition, at that particular time, we didn't have health insurance like we normally do, but the Illinois Central Railroad would provide insurance, health insurance for its people. And that insurance was the doctors here in Macomb, they would have special railroad doctors, and then they would be able to go to a hospital in New Orleans. The Illinois Central Hospital was located there. So any employee or family of the employee, instead of going to a local hospital, would be moved by train down to New Orleans. And our particular book, Registry, shows the people who were admitted from 1917 to 1927. And it tells a lot about them. And those are names that are from a cone. You can see the book registry at the museum along with many other unique artifacts. And over the coming months, the museum will be the place for new seminars.
Every month we will have a seminar on a particular thing that's related to Macomb. Uh, in October, uh, my husband and co-director Sam Daniel will be doing a program about the Liberty White Railroad, which is history, but it's a wonderful, wonderful story. So we look at this museum as not only um, something that Macomb can be proud of, something that tells our story, something that touches our heart. I love the museum. I love to just to see the displays there, the things they have, all the things that I know what some of them are. I don't know what some of them are. What's this do? <laughs> well, that's why, that's why Mama said you can't take me anywhere. <laughs> Just found out what it is. That's right. But I found out what it is, though. Uh, the museum's open until, uh, let's see, Thursday? Thursday and Friday, is that right? What time do you open in the morning? Ten. Ten in the morning to four o'clock in the afternoon. And you can come by on Saturdays. And you can blow the whistle, too, if you want there to. You they don't fuss at you. It, and Walt, our producer, Zach, said that this model train actually runs. So if you're a model train enthusiast, then you may want to come to Macomb and check it out. Well, there's another place in Macomb with a lot of history, and that is the Black History Gallery. Take a look. Steal away. Steal away, steal away to Jesus. Hilda Kaysen started the Black History Gallery in Macomb over 20 years ago. She says the gallery was created to go beyond what's being taught in classrooms. Kaysen was an educator with the Macomb School District for 50 years. My background was to educate our people to be the best that you can be. And so I set out on trying to get the place together so we would have history, so we would know where we came from, what we brought to this country. And we have brought so much talent, just so much. Kaysen says the gallery is the most comprehensive black history collection in the region, complete with personal narratives, artifacts, and much more. You won't leave without learning something. The tradition in some of the countries said that if you shake the stick it would rain they didn't think about all the transformation that happened with the clouds and those kinds of things and so they would take things like this rain stick and they would go out there with it and they would be dancing singing and turning the rain stick over and just hoping that the rain would come You'll find books, videos, and other unique items like this elephant tusk with an entire village carved in it. And we have at the mask, we got the carvings. This is a good example of one of the masks, handmade masks in, in Africa. The gallery is filled with history from Africa as well as important civil rights leaders and other important historical figures. Kaysen says the train industry in Macomb was greatly impacted by the man who invented lubrication systems for steam engines. When the gentleman wanted to bring the railroad track through Macomb, it, it made Macomb flourish. It really made things better. But to remember, the people were jumping off the train, oil in the train, every few miles as it would go up and down the track. But Elisha McCoy invented a machine. He invented the thing where it would oil the train as it would go. And this is the picture of Elisha McCoy. This book needs to be put everywhere so that these young people can see I can be somebody too. If we had it out there, it could be an encouragement to young people who decide I'm gonna shoot somebody, okay? We've got to be told that we have talent. We've got to be told that there's something good in us that we need to bring out. She tells us the gallery also stands as a symbol of equality. Dr. King and his I have a dream that one day my children will live in a country where they don't have to worry about the color of their skin. And that's what it should be for everybody. Because you know what my Bible said? God made everybody. Now that's what the Bible said. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. In checking it out, the Black History Gallery is located in uh, on Wall Street in Macomb. Yeah.